A guitarist from Sweden messaged me on my Instagram account the other day. He saw my black and white tutorial for cutting a pickguard and wanted to know if I could make a copy of an old pickguard for him. It's from a non-Fender Strat-style guitar from his childhood. Putting it up to a standard Fender pickguard template, it's easy to see that it has totally different dimensions, so any commercially available pickguard won't fit properly. Not even close. Also, it was cut out for a humbucker which he no longer uses. To make a pickguard template with a single coil cutout in the bridge position, I'm going to have to do some extra work. As for the holes by the pots, they aren't needed, so I'll just ignore them. Now for the fun part. Some new techniques I've been using since my previous pickguard cutting tutorials. After double stick taping the pickguard face down to some MDF and cutting it out on the 14 inch bandsaw, I'll cut it closer on a 10 inch bandsaw and then get it even closer on the spindle sander. The idea is to lighten the workload on the router bit as much as possible. The less material the router bit has to cut, the easier it is to use a very light touch, which is absolutely critical for not damaging the original pickguard and making a truly accurate template. Lining up the pickguard and template with the guide bearing bit, you can see how little area the bearing is riding on. That sharp bevel of the pickguard is the only reference point the bearing has. Cutting accurately to this point can only be done with experience. Press too hard, and the bearing will melt or deform the bevel. Too light, and you won't get close enough to accurately trace it, and you'll be left with a bumpy, wavy template that looks very amateur. A light and sensitive, but also firm and steady touch is required, as well as a good eye. These develop in time, after dozens of hours on the router table. After some routing, notice the little lip of MDF that's left behind. This is due to the small gap between the bearing and the cutter. The lip will obstruct your visibility and make it impossible to see how close the bearing is to the pickguard edge. It's necessary to flip the template over and route that lip off periodically. For the final tracing, I use a quarter inch guide bearing bit. This not only traces the tight corners of the neck pocket and bridge cutouts, but is less likely to grab and is more accommodating to a light sensitive touch. The last thing you want to do when you're almost done with the perimeter of a template is accidentally gouge the pick guard in the template. The template can be filled with baking soda and super glue and reprofiled, but the original pick guard is pretty much toast at that point. With those addendums out of the way, I use a palette knife or the Stumac bridge removal tool to separate the pick guard from the template. I can rest easy now knowing that the original pick guard is in mint condition and put it back in the shipping package. That's always a satisfying feeling of relief. And now we've got a great looking template. The next challenge is to locate that bridge pickup route. I noticed that despite being cut out for a humbucker, the pick guard still had the single coil pickup mounting holes intact, and I can use those as a guide. So, as I should have expected, my feeling of satisfaction and relief was short lived. I'm going to take the original pick guard back out and reattach it to the template using 8th inch bamboo skewers. Then I'll take it over to the drill press and drill the bridge pickup holes into the template. Then I'll cut a square of MDF and double stick tape that to the template. I'll trace the pickup route from the template onto the MDF and make a new template. A strat pickup routing template. Then I can use the bamboo skewers once again as locating pins with the addition of double stick tape on the pickup template. The skewers line the two templates up, then it's pressed down or tapped on with a hammer. With some careful work on the drill press, as well as some careful work on the router table, we now have a perfect pickguard template. With the strap bridge pickup cut out looking great, this template is finally ready to be used to make a pickguard. Well, almost. I always test the pickup routes with a pickup cover to make sure the routes are big enough to accommodate a pickup. You'd be surprised how often they're too tight, and this case is no exception. I simply cannot get the pickup cover to go through the template. The pickups are a tight fit in the original pick guard, but they do fit. It's beyond me why the trace on the template is slightly smaller, but we're talking a few thousandths of an inch. It doesn't take much for things to go awry when it comes to guitar work. Fortunately, I've done dozens upon dozens of templates over the years, so I went through my collection and found a copy of a Sir pick guard. The pickup routes are tighter than a traditional strat, so it'll be closer to the original pick guard on this job. Using the bamboo skewers once again, I'll mount the bridge pickup template on the sur template, and then trace the sur template onto the pickup template. That should open it up just enough to accommodate a pickup. Then I'll use the pickup template on the pickguard template again, opening up each of the three pickup routes to the new dimensions. Sure enough, when testing it, it's very tight, but the pickup cover does fit, and it'll fit more easily into a pickguard compared to the MDF material. Now the template is finally ready to go, and I can get to making the actual pickguard at last.
The only other noteworthy mention that I didn't cover in my other pickguard videos is the use of this new blade switch template that I made myself. It attaches with bamboo skewers as locating pins and double stick tape. Line it up with the holes for the switch, hammer it on, and it's ready to go. It uses an eighth inch slot, which acts as a guide for the eighth inch shank bits used with Dremels. Using a sixteenth inch cutting bit and a Stumac plunge router base, this template allows me to cut a perfect slot every single time. Previously, I was using a trim router and a guide bushing attachment, and while that also works, it's much bulkier of a setup than needed for such a small job. The 16th inch bits are also prone to breaking, and you can use a much lighter touch and go much more gradually with the Dremel to prevent that from happening. Removing the template, you can see that the switchblade route came out perfect. I'll clean up any irregularities in the bevel with a small file and a razor blade, and then hold everything up to a good light to make sure I didn't forget to drill any holes. It turns out I did forget one. Always double check before taking the pickguard off the template, though you can use the 8th inch skewer trick to reattach the pickguard if needed. I'm including the template with this job, so I made another template for myself to keep in my template library. I'll probably never use it again, but you never know. The completed pickguard came out great. This one was more work than usual, but it was a good opportunity to demonstrate some sticking points in making pickguards. I'll package everything up, fill out the customs form, and send this back to Sweden with hopes that it'll find another satisfied customer. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.